Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of Good Notes 5. Now, I did recently do a video where I did a comparison between Notability and Good Notes 5, and you guys really enjoyed it, and I got a lot of good feedback from that video. So, I decided to do a video just going through Good Notes and showing you guys all its features and just how to use Good Notes in general. Now, I was at first a hardcore Notability user. I used Notability every single day for like a few months. But then I decided to expand my horizons and try GoodNotes 5 and I've also really enjoyed using GoodNotes. I don't at this point have a preference on Notability or GoodNotes, I like them both, they all have pros and cons so if you want to see more in depth about that, like I said I did a video, I'll have that linked in the cards up top for you guys to go check out. But yeah, in this video I'm just going to be going through GoodNotes 5 and just showing you guys how I use it every single day and my method of using GoodNotes. So when I go into GoodNotes, this is what it looks like, this is my setup. So for the last few weeks I've been been constantly using good notes for my schoolwork and everything like that planning anything to do with anything you taking digital notes I use good notes the only thing I use notability for now is just my math lectures that I have in the morning so that's about it so to get started I'm gonna show you guys the basics so first off I'm gonna make you aware of the layout that we have here and how to navigate through good notes so here you can see I have all my documents here. I have my bullet journal, some other planning setups that I've done for each of my subjects, a table that I put up, and then some folders here. So this is my homepage here on GoodNotes. Then you have date and name here. So this is how you want to organize all your things here. So date is organizing everything by the last time it was edited and name is organizing it by alphabetical order. So that's also something you can do. And then you have this row here at the bottom. First one you have documents. So this is just this layout. Then you can also search for documents and you can also search for terms that are in your documents. And so say I'm searching for, this is an Afrikaans term, you probably want to know it, but um, then as you can see, it searches for my notebooks and things like that. And it also searches for the words within my notes. So that's really, really cool. It just depends on whether or not I wrote that word legibly or not. So yeah. And then we also have favorites here. So this is one of the bookmarks that I have. So this is the week I'm currently in, in my bullet journal. So I have a quick way of accessing that as well here in my favorites tab. But now let's go back to our home screen, which is documents. And I'm gonna show you how to create a new document. So to create a new document is pretty straightforward. You just click on this plus button that says new button at the bottom, click on that. And then you have a few options here. So you have a notebook, a folder, image, scan document, take photo, import, and quick note. Now quick note is to create just a plain page. So you don't have to select the cover and all the other things. You can just create a quick little note and then you're done. That's basically what the name implies. So say you're in a hurry and just want to quickly jot something down, double tap on this plus icon and then it just creates a quick note real easy and fast and then you can just write down whatever you want to write down and it's really easy like that so yeah that's how you create a quick note then um to create a folder just select folder here and then you can name your folder whatever so i'm just gonna say random for now just as a test and then you can click on done here and then you're done so you have your folder here you can also select this star here and then you can send it to favorites which is here you can also just go in and then add more folders or add notebooks to your folder. It's really up to you. So now for my favorite part, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a notebook. So I'm going to click on new here and I'm going to click on notebook and then you have a few options here. So first thing I'm going to go to this area, which is cover. So you have a bunch of covers here to choose from. But first I want to show you, you have different sizes of notebooks and different rotations. So here you can see this area here, you can select which language you want. So there are a few here to choose from. And then you also can select portrait or landscape. I'm just gonna stick with a regular portrait. And then here with size, it's you can select like A3, A4, A5. You can select iPhone, GoodNotes standard, tabloid, litter, anything. I've lately been trying out A3. It's actually been really fun. You can select have more, way more summaries and things on one page, but that's maybe for school or something that I like that for. But just for play note taking, I think A4 is still fine. So I'm gonna go with A4 just as a standard for now. And then you have all these notebook covers that you can choose from. So you have just plain common ones. And then you have some simple ones here with different color options on the side. Then you also have solid ones that looks like it has a strap around it. You have some black and white, some other more geometric shapes and bright 
colors um, some brown ones that's more natural toned plain and then patterns I think I'm just gonna go with just gonna go with this random geometric shape um, so you can choose that and then I'm gonna go back here to paper and you can see you have a bunch here to choose from now do keep in mind I have downloaded some other papers you can also import your own papers I'm gonna show you guys how to do that later but you have a bunch here to choose from from good notes himself also here when you go to this option here with papers you can select white and tap on that and you can go to dark and then you can also select all so here when I go to all you can see I have some that I've already imported from other users and then just all the plain good note 5 ones that you already have on the app so this white pages and dark pages section I imported um, I'm just gonna select a random type of paper so I'm just gonna select this square paper and I was gonna set in the title of my notebook so I'm just gonna say tutorial for the sake of this video and then I'm gonna click on create and this is what my page looks like so if I scroll backwards here you can see this is my cover I can also write on my cover if I want to and then I can also right here and to load a new page what you do is you drag from the right to the left hold as you can see pull to add page and then it creates a new page you can continue doing that so you have more than one page so it's a quick and easy way to add more pages and to navigate through all your pages you can also select this squares here and then you have an overview of all your pages thumbnails favorite pages so that's how you set a bookmark and then it will be here at favorites and yeah that's the basic gist of creating a notebook but now let's go through all the features that GoodNotes has and how to use every feature. As you can see here at the top, we have two tabs here. So I have one that's just like another document that I have and this is a new tab with this document. So I can quickly go back and forth between two tabs. But now let's go through all these tools. So first I wanna go through the pen option here. So you have different types of pens you can choose from. The first one you have is a fountain pen. This is what that one looks like. So it's a bit pressure sensitive. You can also set some presets here for the size of your pen. I'm gonna go a bit thicker. So that's the fountain pen. Then you also have a ball pen, and this is what he looks like. It's just one size, not pressure sensitive at all. And then you have a brush pen, which is way more pressure sensitive. So that's what this one looks like. So that's all the pens you have in GoodNotes 5. Um, let me go through some other things you have here. So with a pen, you have presets here at this side. So this is all the presets here, all these. So what you have here is you can set colors. You have some presets that you can create. You can select custom down here and then select some of these and select add presets and then it will be saved here. So um, you have a bunch of choose from or you can select the color wheel and then choose a even more custom color things like that so you have some color options here and you can have three of these so maybe your three main colors that you use a note taking or whatever you use this app for and then you all can also set three sizes that you want to go through every time and select like how big each one is a thick one is so i have one for my bullet journal one for note taking and just another one that's more customizable depending on what i want so that's everything for the pens and the colors of that you have a bunch to choose from so um pen is pretty straightforward you have three types of pens and three presets for colors and three presets for sizes now let's go to the eraser so this is the eraser tool you have three presets of sizes so if you tap on the eraser icon again you'll have this menu pop up so you can select erase entire stroke so if i want to erase this stroke here i can just go over it with my eraser and the entire stroke will be gone but if i turn the erase entire stroke setting off it will just partially delete it and won't delete the entire stroke so that's just depending on what you do and what you prefer then you can also select erase highlighter only let's say i've written here and then i want to erase only the highlighter if that setting is turned on if i go with my eraser it doesn't erase any of my text that I wrote with pen I just just deletes the highlighter part then you can also have auto deselect now what this is say I made a mistake and I switch to eraser and I go there it automatically just erases that and goes back to the pen option here so you don't have to tap again on the pen option just immediately switch back to pen it just makes the whole process a lot faster but you can also just turn that off so, so deselect auto deselect and if i have that i select the eraser it's still gonna be on eraser 
and then I just have to tap on the pin icon again. So that's just real quick and easy a way of quickly switching between pen and eraser. I usually keep the auto deselect on just because it makes everything a lot faster. Okay, so now let's talk about the highlighter. So the highlighter is very similar to the pen option. So you have the option here of three presets for color and three presets for the size. And then when you tap on the highlighter, you have some more options here. So the only setting that it actually has is drawing straight line. So you'll see if I turn this off, I can go any way and it'll just be squiggly line. But when I turn that on and I try to draw like this, it will automatically straighten it out. So that's really helpful if you're highlighting text, it just immediately snaps it into a straight line and you don't need to worry about it not being neat or anything. So highlighter is pretty straightforward. You have three presets for everything just like the pen and you can select whether you have straight lines or not. Then next up, we have the shapes tool, which I have a love-hate relationship with. So the shapes tool is really handy. So I'm gonna draw a circle, it makes it into a circle. I'm gonna draw a square. It creates a kind of a square rectangle creates a rectangle triangle it fills it in to remove the full so if you want this to be empty all you need to do is you select the eraser icon and just erase the, the inside of it and then it will take away all that shading that's in the middle so the reason i say i have a love-hate relationship with the shape tool in notability creating a shape you just draw it and then hold it and then it will snap into place but in good news you have to select the shape tool first but that's not the problem. The problem is I can't edit the shape. So say this square does not look square, so I can't edit it to make it look more square. You understand what I mean? So you have to be very precise in order to get a precise shape. Otherwise it might look unneat or anything. Like in Notability, creating shape, you can then later on edit the sides and things like that. I'm not gonna go into much detail, but but yeah, like I said, I have a love-hate relationship with the Shapes tool. It's fun and easy to draw straight lines or things like that. So that's fine. But yeah, just drawing like shapes like so, it goes pretty wonky sometimes. And with the Shapes tool, you can also tap on it to get some more settings. You can select fill color or not. So that's maybe, maybe you don't want any shapes to be filled or anything. And you can also select snap to other strokes. So what that means is if I draw this line, and I draw this line, it's gonna snap next to each other. But if I turn that off and I draw a line, and I draw a line, it's not gonna snap to each other. It's just gonna be where you drew it. So that's something you can also toggle in the shapes tool. And now we have the beloved lasso tool. Lasso tool is for selecting text or anything. So here you can see, if you tap on it, you have some more menu. So you can select whether it should select handwriting, images, or text boxes so if you have a bunch of things together and you just wanted to select a certain thing and not everything you can select which one it should lasso so that's really nice i think and makes it more convenient so yeah lasso tool basically works like this so i have some handwriting here i can select that and then i tap with my finger and i have this menu come pop up so i can select take screenshot i can select resize so i can just move that around a bit just do whatever I want, which is probably the most usage that people do with the lasso tool. You also have the option to change the color of your text based off of the lasso tool. You can also convert it to text if it does pick it up right. So as you can see, it's selected subscribe, and then you can have it like so. You can also just cut, copy, or delete. So yeah, that's really plain and simple. That's the lasso tool, not really too much going into it pretty straightforward. Then we have the option to add images. And this is pretty much the same here and with the camera. It's basically the camera just takes the image and the images icon just takes you to your gallery. So you can just tap here and then select one of your most recent images, or you can just tap anywhere on your note and then we'll select and show your photo library. So I'm just gonna select one from here. So I'm just gonna select this thing that I use in one of my notes recently. Can just resize it by using this icon here, or you can scrunch it up or expand it like so. So that's something you can do. And editing photos is pretty easy. So what you do is you can tap on this image and you can crop it. So you can either crop it in a rectangle, but this image does not have a background, so it's not really a good example. Or you can freehand crop it, so 
I can maybe go like so and click on done and then it's just this kind of cropped out part of the image but um yeah, you can play around with this as much as you want so that's how you edit images it's pretty straightforward there's nothing too complicated about it at all and then lastly we have this option here now this is a laser how cool is that and then just goes away after a while you can select this laser pointer or you can select just a dot that goes around on your screen i think this will just be very helpful if you have presentations or anything and you want to maybe say something and yeah that's basically what the laser the laser tool is this is cool this is something that not all the apps have and i just think it's a fun thing i'm not going to be personally using it at all but um it's there if you need it if you are someone who likes doing presentations a lot this could really help you if you do a lot of things like this so just for practical use i'm going to be showing you guys just in a actual natural way how I use good notes so here you can see this is my bullet journal that i use every single day i write in every single day so usually i draw all these things up in procreate and then i just import this entire image as a new page into good notes 5 so this is just an example and also i can always just have a blank page and then if i want to create another blank page i just hold and then it adds another page so i can either do that or i can just import this image by going to these dots here selecting this plus button and then i can select image or i can select something from here as well the cover of my bullet journal is also something that i did on procreate um now this is not my design i kind of copied it off of someone else's design i just redid it on procreate just to get a better quality or whatever so this isn't entirely my design, but yeah, I did do this on Procreate and um, yeah, I just imported the image and just added it as the cover of my bullet journal. And yeah, this is all done in Procreate and then all the text here is done on GoodNotes 5. Now, if you're not someone who actually uses GoodNotes for planning and more for like schoolwork, I also have some examples here. So this is my consumer's notebook. So keep in mind i'm afrikaans so all of these notes are in afrikaans but this is kind of a bigger way of showing guys all the things you can do in good notes i actually forgot to cover the text so text works pretty easy you just select the text box tap anywhere on your screen where you want the text to be tap type in whatever you want you can move it around also select the color by selecting all of it and then just selecting what your color you want as your text and then you can select bold or not and you can select styling the font background colors things like that i don't use text often on good notes and just like handwritten notes more but you have the option to add text here and edit your text to your liking so yeah that's text for you guys i'm sorry i completely forgot about it but yeah this is just a more visual way of showing you guys how i use good notes 5 so i have headings in some text i draw boxes and diagrams for certain things then i write out i use the highlighter tool a lot this is an a3 size by the way not a4 this is what i meant you get a lot of chunk of information down on one page just saves a lot of time i think so this is something that i also like to do and here you can see i've imported some images and cropped it a bit so this is everything an example of how i use good notes on the day for schoolwork whatever and just a practical way of how i use all the tools and things like that honestly the lasso tool is probably a lifesaver when taking notes or anything on goodnotes 5 honestly another thing you might be wondering is how to have split screen views so say you have a notebook or anything you want to have next to your notes so you can just select the good notes app in your dock here just drag that to the side and then you can easily have two things next to each other real quick and easy and yeah, that's just how you have two things at the same time in GoodNotes. Like I said, I do have some imported note templates that I use. So in order to add your own templates, what you can do is you can go here to settings. You can select netbook templates. And then when you go to the paper icon here, you'll see you can collect, select import. And then you can select from files or photos. So either one, you can just do that. And then you can import your own templates that will always be on the app. That's really useful if you're someone 
who has your own kind of style of note papers that you like to use when taking notes. So yeah, that was my quick little overview and walkthrough of GoodNotes 5. I hope you guys did enjoy this video and it helped you in some way in understanding the app more and you just get the gist of how I use the app as well. If you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and comment down below letting me know what your thoughts are on this app and any other video suggestions you might have for me. Definitely subscribe to my channel by clicking on the icon on the screen. I have a lot more videos that I want to do for you guys, so don't miss out on any of those. So yeah, definitely click on that subscribe button and click on the playlist to see all of my other iPad kind of videos and click on the video to my previously uploaded video. Love you guys so much. Be weird and be proud of it. Bye.